Okay, so how is everyone today? Good, I hope. All right. So we've been talking about uh, uh, scientific notation and that kind of thing. We're still, still on that. So it's uh, what the twenty eighth. So, here's the definition. So, scientific notation. So, I could say uh, let, let x be in the reals. So that just means, suppose we've got any old number. So let x be in the reals. Then uh, there is uh, a unique, uh, unique s in the reals uh, and n in the integers such that x is s multiplied by 10 to n. So we could, we could do that. And uh, we, need, we need one more requirement. So and uh, 1 is less or equal to the absolute value of s is less than 10. So what that's uh, what these two things together are saying is, you know, last time when we were dealing with, uh, you know, we said, oh, I want to take a number and I want it to be the case that there's exactly one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point, and we started moving it around, and I said, here, I've moved it one place. Is that far enough? And then we said, no, that's not far enough. And then we said, I moved it another place, and we said, is that far enough? And no, uh, not far enough, you know. So what I'm, what, what these two things together are saying is that, uh, is that, uh, uh, this ex this exact is exactly what it means for you to have put the decimal place it, uh, in the correct position. Okay. So now, each of these, uh, each of these s and n have names, and we need to know them by name now. So S, that's called the significand. And N is called the exponent. Now, in other usually, usually uh, older uh, textbooks, sometimes uh, the significand will be called the mantissa. But uh, we're going to use we're going to use the word significant in our course. All right. So it becomes clear with a, with a couple examples. Uh, I could say uh, find uh, the significant exponent and scientific notation. Uh, for each of the following. So 0 0.1234561314. So that's uh, you know, one of the numbers. Uh, next, how about uh, 2, <coughs> 7, and then 1828. Uh, 1828. 1828. Uh, uh, 45.90, say, like that. So that's one uh, one number there. And then, how about uh, 2.019? So we want to find the significant, the exponent, and the 
the scientific notation for each one of those. All right. So it's just a matter of counting. <coughs> How many places do we need to uh, move the decimal? So uh, for this first one, is that in the correct place? Yeah. No. Right. So we need to move it to, you know, we're going to end up moving it to the right. End up moving it to the right. So how many places to the right do we need to move it? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So can you see that uh, seven, it's seven places we want to move it. Now, this number is, is a small, smallish number, okay, in the sense that uh, in magnitude it's less than one. So that means that, uh, you know, we had to move the, we had to move the decimal uh, seven places to the right, and that's telling us that the exponent is going to be negative. This is a small thing. Okay, so this is smaller than one. Therefore, the exponent is negative. So specifically, what will the exponent be for this number? Negative 7. All right. What is the uh, significant? Very good, 1.314. And now we can write that number in scientific notation. The scientific notation for that number is, so psi notation like that, is uh, significant, 1.314 multiplied by 10 to exponent. Any question about that one? Uh, I put it there because uh, it uh, just makes it easier for your eyes to see it. Sure. And uh, even if you're being a little bit sloppy with your dots, you know, because this one is in parentheses, it's basically just a visual aid. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about this number? So is this one, is the decimal in the correct place for this one? Nope. Nah, we've got to move it, right? So specifically... Uh, I can see I need to move it to the left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So any question about that uh, counting? All right. So uh, so now, should the exponent for this number be what? What should it? Uh, what should it be? Negative or positive or, z or zero or what? The exponent should be positive, right? Because this is kind of a big, biggish number. Kind of big. So this is uh, more than one. In fact, you know, more than 10. <laughs> so uh, more than one. Therefore, the exponent is uh, not negative. <laughs> It's more than 10, so the exponent is going gonna, is gonna to be positive, 10 or more. All right, so then uh, the exponent, according to the counting there, that'd be 11. And then the significant would be what? Well, it'd be 2.7, all that stuff, right? So it'd be 2.7, and then 1.8, 2.8. 1, 8, 2, 8, 45, 90. So I can rattle those numbers off because actually, <laughs> actually that number is a significant mathematical constant, or at least the first several digits of a significant mathematical constant. So I, I just know them by, by heart. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the number written in scientific notation would be the significant, so 2.7, 1828. 
times 10 to exponent 11. Any question about that one? All right. And then uh, every once in a while, depending on the student, this last one is the one that trips them up sometimes. So concerning that number, what's the exponent? Zero. It's zero. Because, you know, in some sense, when, because we're viewing this as a counting issue, what the exponent is is it's, it's telling you how many places do you need to move the decimal point. If, you, if in the end you're moving it to the right, then the exponent's going to be negative. If you're moving the, the decimal point to the left, it's going to be positive. So for this, for this number, how many places do we need to move it? Zero. We don't need to move it, right? So it doesn't move at all. So as a result, the exponent is zero. All right. And then the significant is what? Okay, good. So exactly that number. And then that number written in scientific notation would be what? Well, same as always. It would be significant multiplied by 10 to the exponent. So now, does that work out? What's 10 to 0? It's 1. Right. Any question about this one? OK, so then, you know, scientific notation, it's a thing. Uh, now, the reason why, in the end, you, uh, like we said last time, uh, you may end up wanna, wanting to use scientific notation. The reason why it's used so much in chemistry and physics and what have you is that a lot of the numbers are, um, when written with not in scientific notation, the numbers are sort of inconveniently big or inconveniently small. So an example would be something like, uh, you know, a hydrogen atom, in the first place, its diameter, its size, like if you were to get out a ruler and measure it, <laughs> It's, uh, it's, uh, its size is, 10 times, uh, is uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters, more or less. So that size is called an angstrom. That's really little. <laughs> it's not, uh, not, not big. So, you know, diameter of uh, a hydrogen atom. So, you know, it would be, it, it's about uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. And that's, that's significant enough of a measurement that it has its own name. That's called an angstrom. So 1, and then uh, the, the symbol, instead of M for meters, the symbol is uh, capital A with a fancy hat. Angstrom. One angstrom. You know, and then, then you might, uh, you might, uh, you might uh, ask, okay, well, maybe concerning the mass of a hydrogen atom, you know, they're little, but they still have, you know, they still weigh, you know, they still have some mass, some. And then you could ask, uh, you know, the number, the number of, uh, of hydrogen atoms, hi hydrogen atoms, uh, in one gram, <laughs> one gram of hydrogen. So what's the name for that? <laughs> you know, you, if you've taken chemistry, you know it. You just don't realize that you know it. The number of hydrogen atoms that are in one gram of hydrogen is called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. Okay. So, uh, and that number is in scientific notation, 6.022-ish, and then multiplied by 10 to 23. So, you know, if you were to write that out, that means, uh, you know, shift the point to the right 23 places. So we'd shift it three places past 022, and then we'd have to write 20 more zeros. You know, that's not convenient. <laughs> okay. So, you know, in some sense, you know, uh, it takes a whole lot of hydrogen atoms to be one gram because they're so small. So, you know, in, in science, we usually have uh, really inconvenient numbers that, that are inconveniently scaled. Okay, so here's the, here's the one mathematical reason why we use scientific notation. Uh, 
Uh, so I could say let let x be a multiplied by 10 to m, and uh, y uh, be b multiplied by 10 to n. So what I'm saying is suppose we have two numbers x and y, and they're represented in scientific notation with those significands and those exponents. Then we can calculate the product. x multiply y is, just following the rules of arithmetic that we know, so that would be a multiplied by 10 to m uh, multiplied by b multiplied by 10 to n. Now, that's just a bunch of multiplies. And multiply is associative, which means we can do what? Remember, associ associate means, you know, make a group. And in, in math expressions, what are the groups? The stuff in the parentheses, right? So because this is just a bunch of multiplies and, and we've put some parentheses, we can remove those parentheses because multiplication is associative. So we can say, okay, well, this is uh, a multiplied by 10 to m multiplied by b multiplied by 10 to n. So then logically, the way it's currently written is we have significant and then scale. So this bit you know, is sometimes called the scale, so 10 to the exponent. So significant multiplied by scale multiplied by significant multiplied by scale. So now multiplication, uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get the significands together and the scales together. So can I sort them into, into the order so that all the significants are in the front and all the scales are in the back? Yes. What, what gives me permission to do that? Commutative. Commutative, right? So then this would be, you know, it'd be AB, like that. Significant, multiply, significant, multiply, scale, multiply, scale, like that. And then now, this is still just a bunch of multiplies in a row, so I can put parentheses where I want them. So now I'm going to put parentheses where I want them. I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to parenthesize the significands there. And I'm going to parenthesize this stuff here. So now this stuff in the second group, you know, actually we've done enough work to where we can actually simplify that. Because what this is, just this one factor, that's a group of m tens all multiplied together. And that's a group of n tens all multiplied together. So there's just a bunch of tens in here. There's just a bunch of tens, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. How many? M plus n, right? So here's, there's m of them right there, and there's n more of them right there. You know, this is Sally has m apples, and uh, Billy has n apples. All together, how many apples? OK, so then this is, uh, this is uh, AB multiplied by 10 to the m plus n. So this is a significant uh, reason why we use scientific notation. And the reason is because if you have two numbers in scientific notation, you automatically know the exponent, sort of, you know, just immediately. Because the exponent is just, you just add the, you just add the exponents. And adding is easy. Now you still have to multiply the significands, but the thing about that is, is that uh, because A is a significand, it's a number between, between 1 and 10 and b is another number between 1 and 10. So they're similar in size, right? It's not like, it's not something like this, you know, 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters, and another thing, you know, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Those things, the difference in scale on those, okay, is 33 orders of magnitude. <laughs> you know, because that one's exponent is 23, and that one's is negative 10. These are vastly different sized things. So now, uh, an example using this would be something like this. I could say, how about, uh, how about, uh, well, first, first, uh, I want to remind you of something lovely from grade school. So grade school. Do you remember, uh, do you remember doing stuff like this in grade school? Stuff like uh, 131. Uh, multiplied by 201. So do you remember doing that? You know, without a calculator? <laughs> okay. Well, let's do it. Okay. So remember the way that it works. So you process this, uh, you do this process one digit at a time. So we're going to consume this, uh, that digit right there. 
So 1 times 1 is 1. I write the 1. Nothing carries. 1 times 3 is 3. Nothing carries. 1 times 1 is 1. Nothing carries. So that was easy. So then, uh, you know, we're done with that digit. Good. And then now I want to deal with that digit. But because I'm, I'm doing the second digit there, uh, you have to write a 0 right here. You have to write a 0 right there. Because really, that's the tens place. So then, you know, you got to write a zero right there. And then now these are all easy, right? Zero, zero, zero. So zero, zero, zero. Like that. Lovely. And then now we want to we want to deal with that digit. So, you know, I'm going to start recording that right here. But what do I have to write down here first? Two zeros. Two zeros. Now, the reason why you have to write two zeros is because I'm pointing at a two. But that's not really a two. That's actually a two hundred. That's what it really is. So there's two uh, zeros right there. Okay. So then two and blah, blah. You know, you remember. So this is uh, what? Two, six, two, like that. So now that I have all these, what do I do with them? You add them all up, right? Remember that? Good times. So then doing that, that'd be, you know, one. And then uh, three, three, six, two. Lovely. Now here's a, here's a different question that's also a grade school question. Uh, now what, so that's, that's the simpler one. What if it was, uh, what if it was multiply, multiply uh, these two numbers, say, something like uh, 53.8 and, uh, you know, 2. I don't know, 71, something like that. <laughs> now we have fractions, <laughs> you know. It's not the it's it's more difficult because there's decimal places. So do you remember doing this in grade school? Remember doing that? Now uh, you know it the way that uh, the way that you do it depends on the way in in some sense the way that your teacher taught you. But here's the here's the easiest way. So then uh, these are integers, right? One three one and two zero one. Is is fifty three point eight an integer? No. How about this one? No, that one's not either. Now, our life would be a lot simpler if we were multiplying two integers. That'd be easier. So, so now, what would it take? What would it take to uh, make this one an integer? Shifting the point to the right by one, right? So we could have a right shift one position. So if we, if we say, okay, I'll do that. And how many, how many would we need to do for this one? Two, right? So to make my life easier, what I'm going to do is instead of multiplying those numbers that I was originally asked, I'm actually going to multiply these. So oops, I need a little bit of space probably. Five hundred and thirty eight and two hundred and seventy one. So those are not the numbers I was given. Right. This one has been shifted right once and this one has been shifted right twice. So I'm going to get this answer. And then the real answer, how do I get the real answer? Shift it back, how many places? Three. One, one place for that one and two for that one. OK. So you know, I'll just do this real super quick. So 538, 0. 56, so 6, carry the 5. 7 times 3 is 21. Add 5 is 26, so 6, carry the 2. 7 times 5 is 35. 2 more is 37. Okay, so now those are done. Those carries are done. So now I write 0, 0. So 16, 6, carry the 1. 7 times 3 is, tw uh, no, 2 times 3 is 6. And 1 more is 7, no carry. And 2 times 5 is 10. Okay, now we add. So this would be 8, 9, 12, 17, 7, carry the 1. 15, carry a 1, 4. One. Um, Did I make a mistake? Yes. Where? Uh, the thousand column should have a one added to it, so it should be six. Mm -hmm. so it should be a carryover from the five, six, six. Okay, six, six, tw and oh, five. Sorry, never mind, never mind. I, Let's do it with a calculator. No, 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 you're, you're right. I just, it 
looked so smooth. I just saw it as a one <laughs> on that top bone. Okay. Top yeah, these are these are little carries right there. Let me just do it real quick. My mistake. 530H times 271. Yeah. Okay. So then, you know, that's not that's not uh, the correct answer because it doesn't it's not shifted correctly. So now you can sort of look at these these numbers and say, well, let's imagine that that number is 50. That would make our lives easy, right? And let's imagine that that one is 3 because it's kind of close to 3. So what is 50 times 3? About 150, right? So the answer to the question should be about 150. Not uh not a, not 145,000, right? So we need to shift it back. So the answer to the question is 145.798. Good. Any question about that? Isn't it fun to do arithmetic by hand? All right. So then, that being the case, now we can ask the question that I really wanted to ask. I could say. Uh, suppose that uh, that we have the following: let let x be uh, 1.31 times 10 to the 4, and then uh, let y be 2.01 times 10 to the negative 9. So we've got two numbers there: x and y, written in scientific notation. Okay, then uh, it's it's easy to, to, to do some parts of this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for find the uh, exponent significant significant and the scientific notation of x multiply y. So now the exponent I claim that if you understand this, you should be able to tell me right now without doing any work. You just look at it and tell me. So what is the exponent? Negative five. Negative five. Because the exponent for this one is four. The exponent for that one is negative nine. And I'm asking you to multiply them, so the exponent is you, you, you add them. You know, that one plus that one. So the exponent would be 4 plus negative 9, which is negative 5. Okay, so that's an important property of scientific notation because without doing much work, you can immediately figure out about how big of a thing are we talking about. Okay, you know, it's sort of answering the question like, uh, you know, is it like a shovel full? Is it a thimble full? Is it a, is it a dump truck full of stuff? How much, how much stuff is it? That's what the exponent is telling you. Okay, so for the significant, you know, we, we need to do, uh, we need to do the product 1.31 uh, 1 multiplied by 201, uh, 2.01. 2 And assuming we don't have a calculator for a moment, we can use the same trick that we did on the previous page, right? Instead of doing 2.01 times, time, uh, sorry, instead of doing 1.31 multiplied by 2.01, we can do 131 times 201, and then shift four places, right? So we could do, okay, well, you know, 131 times 201, you know, we do it, you know, you know, blah, however we do it. And then from the previous page, that was uh, 26331. Now, that's not exactly, that's not the answer because of the shiftingness. But uh, looking, at, uh, looking at the size of the numbers, you know, that one's about, you know, one-ish, and that one's about two-ish. So the answer should be about how big? Two-ish, right? So, you know, what, what's going to be the answer? Right, 2.6331. Okay, so the significant is uh, 2.6331. And uh, the scientific notation 
would then be 2.6331 times 10 to the negative 5. All right. Any question about this? Yeah? When we do this, are you going to want us to uh, do the multiplication by hand? Ah, uh, just follow just follow the instructions on the homework. So, so we'll probably have one where you do it by hand, and then and then never again. Okay. Other questions? Okay. So another matter uh, that comes up a lot in uh, in in science context is something called significant figures. So this always goes hand in hand with scientific notation. So to introduce the idea of uh, significant figures, I'll do it. Uh, I'll you know we can have a joke. Okay, so then this joke is completely fictitious. There's, there's nothing real about it. So one time I went to uh, the Natural History Museum, and I was uh, looking at uh, a T-Rex skeleton. You know, and it was, you know, it's a gorgeous thing. By the way, coming out of the joke, if you, ever, if you, if you haven't ever done that, gone to and seen a T-Rex skeleton, you, sh you should. It's really pretty glorious to see how big those creatures were. Anyway, uh, back into the joke. You know, so I'm looking at it, and just, you know, just amazed by this uh, by this thing there and uh, then then uh, a uh, na uh, a museum staff member comes up and says it's pretty cool isn't it do you have any questions and I said yeah how old is this thing and they said it's 65 million three years and two months old and I said three years and two months how could you possibly know that and uh, they said well I've been working here for, uh, for you know, about five years, and uh, three years and two months ago, they, they put up this display, and they put that plaque there that said 65 million years old. That was three years and two months ago. <laughs> okay, so, so now, what's the problem with that? Okay, so the problem with that is, is that, uh, is that, you know, people go and dig in the dirt and stuff, and they find you know, fossils and what have you. And you can use science, various kinds of, you know, scientific methods, geology, chemistry, and what have you, and you can figure out, uh, you know, approximately how old stuff is if you dig something out of the ground. There's lots of uh, really good ways to do that. But the thing is, is that uh, for, for, for things like T-Rex skeletons, if the situations are just like perfect, like, you know, so, some, uh, <laughs> you know, some, uh, some, uh, what are they called? Archaeologists. Some archaeologists could just have it exactly their way. The site is pristine. Everything is perfect. <clears throat> They're going to be able to date the, the age of that skeleton to within like half a million years. Like if things are just like perfect. Or, or, or at best a few hundred thousand years. <laughs> so like the date of that uh, T-Rex skeleton is, is probably something like, you know, six, uh, 65 uh, point three million years plus or minus a hundred thousand years plus or minus a hundred thousand years like if it's perfect so to, so to say that uh, to say that that three years and two months is in any way relevant to the age of the skeleton is just absurd so does everybody get the idea so those are uh, you know we want to avoid that kind of thing so there's a there's a you know a systematic way to avoid that kind of problem uh, here here's the main one that we'll talk about in our class so uh, significant figures, significant figures. So uh, let x equal to a multiplied by uh, 10 to n be in scientific notation. So we've got some number that's written in scientific notation. Uh, the number of digits digits in the significand A uh, is called is a uh, is the number of significant figures.
All right. So what that more or less what that means is that means that uh, this is this is how accurate we know this measurement. So if we just have some number like uh, 1.31 you know then in mathematically ignoring scientific concerns and measurement concerns and things like that I can uh, I can put as many zeros to the right as I want. So w that's the same number as 1.310 that's the same number and that's the same number as 1.3100. And so all those are the same number, but typically in a math context where we're not talking about science, you would write that one, you know, because human beings are lazy and we say, well, if those are the same, then I'm not going to write that zero. You know, I don't want to do that. It's easier not to write it. Okay, fine. But in a scientific context, uh, when you're writing stuff in scientific notation, the digits that you write down in the significand mean something. So, so this is just in a this is in a in a non-science context. Uh, in a science context, the number one point three uh, three one multiplied by 10 to 4. So if we had that number written down, how many significant figures does this have? That's three significant figures. Okay. In a different context, 1.310, you know, times 10 to the 4. Now, notably, these two numbers are, the, are where only math is concerned, those are the same number. But where science is concerned, when you write that down, this is something different. How many significant figures does this one have? It has four significant figures. So that means that uh, we know we know this uh, quantity more accurately, you know, you know, to this accuracy. And then, you know, just to, you know, we can say one point, uh, and then uh, three. One, so that'd be three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. So all of these numbers are the same number, mathematically, but where science is concerned, these are different because writing that down in a scientific context is saying that uh, we know this number to, you know, how many? One, two, three, nine places, nine significant figures. Okay. Good. Any question about this? So now, uh, in your uh, in your science classes, typically uh, it is the case that all of the stuff, like all the exercises that you're going to work out, uh, typically the quantities are going to have like four, three or four s uh, significant figures. And any stuff that you're doing in a lab where you're doing, you know, mixing stuff and stir and whatever, those are going to have like one, two, three or four significant figures. Never any more than that. Like if you're doing, if you're, if you're taking an undergraduate chemistry course and you're dealing all with four significant figures or more, that's like super duper hardcore. <laughs> if you're using four significant figures for all the stuff. Okay. So now, uh, to to put that into context, uh, the the scientific theory that has the that has the best accuracy of all of our scientific theories that that exist is called quantum electrodynamics. And they're able to make measurements. They're able to make measurements and, and predicted, predicted values uh, that are accurate uh, to the following kind of extent. So the accuracy available in quantum electrodynamics and, qu and this particular part of, of quantum mechanics would be equivalent to being able to measure the distance between the west coast and the east coast of the United States to within the width of a hair. That's accurate, right? <laughs> to within the width of a hair. So that's close real close. Uh, you might ask, how many significant figures is that? That must be a lot. How many is it? No, it doesn't. It won't matter what unit you're working with because the scale takes care of that. So how many significant figures does this, uh, does this electro quantum electrodynamics work, work in? Ten. The most accurate scientific theory that uh, has ever been produced by mankind, by human beings has 10 significant figures. 
Okay, so that just gives you an idea of what we're talking about. Okay, so now, um, fine. Uh, typically, you're going to have three or four uh, significant figures, but uh, there are some places, uh, sometimes, uh, you have infinitely many sig significant figures. infinitely many significant figures. So the, the main two places are uh, when you're dealing with mathematical constants. Uh, so an example would be something like pi. Right? So pi is a mathematical constant, and you can calculate it to as many places as you care to have. So you can calculate it out to 50 places, and that's good enough for any science that we're going to do ever. Okay, that, uh, something like... Uh, if you have pi to 24 places, that's enough to, to, to uh, measure the, uh, the diameter of uh, the solar system to within the width of a proton. <laughs> so that's pretty accurate. Uh, so, you know, 3.14 dot dot dot. Another one that comes up a lot in science is the logarithm of 2, which uh, it starts, at, starts out as 0 0.693. So anybody who's taking chemistry or physics recently, do you recognize 0 0.693 from, from chemistry? Where does it, in what context does it come up? Can you remember? The context, the usual context is half-lives. You want to calculate the half-life of something, then this, this comes up. All right. Uh, the, other, the other time that uh, you have infinitely many significant figures is when you're just counting something. So like, you know, maybe, maybe you count and you really do have three beakers. And, you know, there's no real, <laughs> there's no real uncertainty about the number of beakers that we have there. <laughs> you know, there's not like, it's not like there could be like 3.01 beakers. <laughs> there's three of them. So in such a case, uh, you know, infinitely many significant figures. Okay. So uh, the rule that we need to know and love and be familiar with is the following. Uh, it is that uh, when multiplying, uh, uh, two or more numbers. The result has uh, significant figures or significant figure count equal to the minimum. significant figure count. Of the factors. So what that means is that, uh, you know, if you're multiplying two numbers together and you know one of them super duper accurate, accurately, so maybe it's like something that we got from quantum electrodynamics, you know it to 10 significant figures. <laughs> and then you multiply it by something that has three significant figures, well, then that means that the result has three significant figures. That you can't know it any more accurate than that. Okay. So, uh, example would be taking that one that we did on the previous page. So, if x is 1.31 times 10 to exponent 4, and uh, y is uh, 2.01 times 10 to negative 9. So then taking that one, uh, I, we can say, well, how many significant figures does that one have? Three, right? And that one? Three. So the result can have, at most, how many significant figures? Three. So, you know, uh, from, from previous work, we know that uh, x multiply y 
on the on the previous page there is a uh, watch. Uh, 2.6331. Uh, 2.6331 uh, times 10 to the negative 5. And if this was a math context, then that would be the answer. But if this is a science context, then what we're saying is that you know we made some kind of measurement, and we know we know x to three significant figures, and we know y to three significant figures. So we so we can calculate the product and know it to three significant figures. So what would be the correct res scientific response to this? Very good. So now we'll round, Kazunhaich, <coughs> round uh, with significant figures. So the way that you do it is you say, okay, three and three, and the smallest of those is three. So if it had been three and two, we would be allowed two significant figures. If it had been, you know, eight and five, we'd be allowed five significant figures. So we circle the three most significant digits in the significand. So 2.63, and have a look at those, and then look, and then look one more digit, and you ask, this digit over there, is it big enough? that I should bump that one up? And, and in this case, the answer is no. So three, you know, remember the rule in grade school that zero, one, two, three, and four round down to zero. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine round up to, you know, round up. So is it enough to round up? No, it's not enough to round up. So then in significant figures, 2.6, uh, three times 10 to negative five. Okay, uh, so uh, if you, you know, in a, in a, in a science class, if you, for, if you are not doing your rounding right, your significant figure uh, uh, considerations correctly, then it is like you are that, uh, that uh, person at the Natural History Museum saying uh, that this T-Rex skeleton is, is 65 million, three years and two months old. <laughs> you know, so you look, you look silly. Or it would be like, uh, you know, you could say, you could go to, a, you could go to a, a store, and if you wanted to buy some string or, you know, or whatever, you could, you could say something like, uh, you know, and it's like the, the bulk, bulk string store, you know. <laughs> and you could say, well, I want, uh, I want uh, 180 miles and one inch of uh, string, please. <laughs> like, uh, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> 181 miles and one inch. How about we just <laughs> don't try to be that accurate? Any question about this? This is okay? All right. Good. So then, where are we? Where's the first page? So now we can go on to the next thing. <coughs> so this is uh, square root. So let x and y be in the reals. So uh, now this, what I'm about to write, is not about square root, rather it's about solving an equation. So suppose that uh, we have something that looks like this. Three multiplied by y is equal to x. You know, so that's an equation. Three multiplied by y is equal to x. And uh, suppose we wanted to solve for y, which means that we want another equation that, uh, that means the same thing as this one, but y is all by itself. You know what I mean? You want to have it, uh, have it uh, look like this. You want it to be y is solved for. So as written there, y is not solved for because it's, you know, we've got 3y. We just want just regular old y. So how do we get, uh, how do we get the y by itself? Yeah, we've got to divide by 3. So what's going to happen is that, uh, is that on this side, that's multiplied by 3. But if I move it to the other side, then that's the opposite of multiplied by 3. That's the undo for multiply by 3. What's the undo? It's, it's divide by 3. Or you could say multiply by a third. 
So what I'm saying is that uh, to do that, the three, you know, the three changes sides, and when it changes sides, it's multiply three there, it's divide by three there. Okay, so now, that being the case, the following are equivalent, TFAE. So we'll use that initialism a lot in this class, so the following are equivalent. So first, suppose we have an equation that instead of the equation looking like 3y is x, now let's suppose that the equation looks like this, y squared is x. And remember, that's a caret, right? That's y caret 2 is x. Uh, we need another condition. So and y is greater or equal to 0. So those two conditions together. And this next thing is we want to solve for y. So we want it to say y is equal. So now, this y is not by itself, because that's y caret 2. We want the caret 2 to move to the other side. Right? Just like we wanted the multiply by 3 to move to the other side. So over here, multiply by 3. Over here, divide by 3. Over here, caret 2. And what is it when it's over here? It's square root. So when it moves to the other side, it uh, looks like this. Now, this is the same thing that you know and love. It's not, there's nothing, uh, you know, if you've heard of square root before, we're still talking about square root. But here's the deal. And then this will be the last thing that we say until until Wednesday, is that this bit, in my experience, is, uh, is very frequently overlooked by students. And it causes a lot of lost points on exercises. So to be clear, suppose I ask you about the square root of 16. Then what's the square root of 16? It is not plus or minus 4. It's 4. So the square root of 16 is 4. And this is wrong. So it is wrong to say that the square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. So to be clear, if you say the square root of 16 is negative 4, then you run afoul of this rule. Stuff that comes out of the square root can't be negative. So now, are, am I saying that, uh, that I'm disputing that if you take a negative 4 and another, and, and another negative 4 and multiply them together, you don't get 16? No, of course you do, right? You take a negative 4 and you square it, you get 16. No dispute. Nevertheless, the square root of 16 is 4. It's not plus or minus 4. It's 4. And the square root of, the square root of 9 is 3. Not plus or minus 3. It's 3. Good. So we'll, we'll pick that up next time. So have a nice uh, Monday. Uh, and please turn in your